reading from the book of Exodus. When Moses came to the people and related all the words and ordinances of the Lord, they all answered with one voice, We will do everything that the Lord has told us. Moses then wrote down all the words of the Lord, and rising early the next day, he erected at the foot of the mountain an altar and twelve pillars for the twelve tribes of Israel. Then having sent certain young men of the children of Israel to offer burnt offerings and sacrifice young bulls as peace offerings to the Lord, Moses took half of the blood and put it in large bowls. The other half he splashed on the altar. Taking the book of the covenant, he read it aloud to the people, who answered, All that the Lord has said, we will heed and do. Then he took the blood and sprinkled it on the people, saying, This is the blood of the covenant that the Lord has made with you, in accordance with all these words of his. Verum da mini. Offer to God a sacrifice of praise. Offer to God a sacrifice of praise. God the Lord has spoken and summoned the earth from the rising of the sun to its setting. From Zion, perfect in beauty, God shines forth. Offer to God a sacrifice of praise. Gather my faithful ones before me, those who have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. And the heavens proclaim his justice, for God himself is the judge. Offer to God sacrifice of praise. Offer to God praise as your sacrifice, and fulfill your vows to the Most High. Then call upon me in time of distress. I will rescue you, and you shall glorify me. has been planted in you and is able to save your souls. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. Dominos vobiscum, et cum spiritu tuo, Lexio Sancti Evangelii secundum Mateum, Gloria tibi Domine. Jesus proposed a parable to the crowds. The kingdom of heaven may be likened to a man who sowed good seed in his field. While everyone was asleep, his enemy came and sowed weeds all throughout the wheat, and then went off. When the crop grew and bore fruit, the weeds appeared as well. The slaves of the householder came to him and said, Master, did you not sow good seed in your field? Where have the weeds come from? He answered, An enemy has done this. His slaves said to him, 
Do you want us to go and pull them up? He replied, No, if you pull up the weeds, you might uproot the wheat along with them. Let them grow together until harvest. Then at harvest time, I will say to the harvesters, First collect the weeds and tie them in bundles for burning, but gather the wheat into my barn. Verbum Domini, Nos Tibi Christe. We have representatives from Honduras and Burma and Colombia and there's an old saying that all roads lead to Rome, but I like to say all roads lead to Irondale some days. And we have so many uh, people, priests and lay faithful from all over the world expressing the universality of the church. The barn that the Lord speaks of in the gospel where the wheat will be gathered is his kingdom his kingdom that he has ushered in and that he desires us to become participants in his own divine nature. The parable of the wheat and the weeds is a continuation of our blessed Lord's parable of the sower and the seed that we heard a few days ago. First, the words of the gospel that Jesus says, the very first words, Jesus proposes. Jesus proposed a parable to the crowds. Our Lord proposes. And there's a big difference be between proposing and imposing. Our Lord proposes. To propose means to put forward, to invite for consideration by discussion. And Fulton Sheen would even say that religion is not so much a matter of discussion, but it's a matter of decision. When the Lord proposes to us, he invites us to make a decision. He doesn't impose his will upon us, but he invites us to conform our lives to his manner of life, to his kingdom. To impose means to force or to force something unwelcome or unfamiliar to be accepted or put into place. Our Lord's teaching, the gospel, is a proposal. You could say it's perhaps the greatest proposal of all human history. When we think of a proposal, we think of usually a husband proposing to his wife and getting down on his knee. But this proposal that the Lord proposes us is the greatest proposal in human history when God himself literally proposes to us. You can say that God proposes, that God condescends that God comes down from all eternity from the bosom of the Father and proposes to us his bride. And Jesus Christ is the bridegroom from all eternity. He is the eternal word, the logos. He is that which everything is held in together into existence. And he proposes to each one of us his gospel, the good news. Our Lord's teaching is the in the gospel is meant to be gentle and yet firm in his invitation to follow him. The, the parable of the wheat and the weeds is meant to strike a chord 
with everyday hearers, and we need to be receptive to what the Lord is teaching us. Receptive means to be docile, it means to be teachable, it means to be malleable. That we need to be receptive to our Lord's teaching and to his instruction. The wheat that our Lord plants in our souls, or in the language of the sower and the seed, our ground that we heard a few days ago in the gospel about the different types of ground that we can fall into, the rocky ground, the thorny ground, the, the ground that is rich, prepared to welcome the word, each one of us can fall in our lives in a very real way, sometimes in and out of these types of ground. If we look honestly at ourselves in the way that we have responded to God's grace and his invitation, have we always invited the Lord into our lives? When we heard the Lord inviting us, knocking at our door, you know, sometimes throughout the day we may receive inspirations, we call those actual graces, invitations from the Lord to prayer, to dialogue. Do we listen to that? Do we listen to the invitation from the Lord to enter into dialogue with him? We can choose. Very much like if a phone rings, if we see a text come in, we can choose to answer that text or deny it. How many times do we press decline? You know, again, our Lord's teaching, the gospel, is a proposal. The greatest proposal in human history where God himself, again, comes down and invites us to be his bride, his friends, and invites us into his kingdom. We have been given a share in the royal inheritance, and that is a share in Christ's sonship. Christ Jesus is son by nature. We are sons and daughters by adoption. And he has given us a share into this relationship with him. And just as there is a big difference between proposing and imposing, there is likewise an obvious difference between wheat and weeds. If anybody has ever worked in a garden, if anybody has ever, some of our locals have gone out and seen Father Joseph's garden, there's a big difference between wheat and weeds. Now, Father Joseph is very vigilant on his property, his garden. Before weeds start to come up, he is very vigilant. But that being said, sometimes weeds come out of nowhere. And you just, the gospel is very clear that you just don't go in and pluck out all of the weeds because you might damage the wheat as well. And the wheat that the Lord sows in us is his kingdom, is his grace, the gifts that he has given us through the sacraments, divine life, through baptism, faith, hope, and charity, the gifts of the Holy Spirit that he gives us, wisdom, knowledge, understanding, counsel, fortitude, piety, and fear of the Lord. All these gifts that the Lord gives us are meant for gathering into his barn, into his kingdom. And there is also a big difference between a verdant farm 
or a barren wasteland. The scripture is full of examples all the way from the Old Testament, even through our Lord's teaching, very graphic images that the Lord gives us that we can actually see. Images from nature. Images from culture that people would actually be able to wrap their minds around and grasp the meaning of his words. Think of a verdant farm or the difference between a barren wasteland. A barren wasteland that is dry and arid, no water around, no growth, and the difference between that and a farm which has much produce. Our Lord minces no words about where exactly the weeds come from. They sprout from the deception of the enemy. They sprout from the devil, the adversary, the one who wants our souls dead, the one who wants to sprout and sow division in your soul, in my soul, in the souls of your families, in the souls of your children, in the souls of the church, in the souls everywhere throughout society, the devil is sowing dissension. And we're to be vigilant. These weeds can suffocate and choke authentic growth in the spiritual life, in our souls. First Peter 5, verse 8 says, Be sober-minded and alert. That means to be watchful, to look up as if you're looking out from a lighthouse, to be watchful, first of all, of any dissension. And if we're living a life of grace, if we're living the commandments, if we're living the life of faith, hope, and charity, and if the gifts of the Holy Spirit are operative within our lives, then when dissension comes our way, when the enemy is trying to sow deceit, we're going to recognize it. It's going to be, our antennas will be up, so to speak. If our antenna is down, if your antenna is down in your car, you're not going to get any reception. Now, I know nowadays they don't make cars with antennas. They're hidden. Everything is hidden. You used, used, used to have cell phones and this huge antenna coming up. Now, antennas are hidden, but they're still there. But we need to have our spiritual antennas attuned. And to be ever watchful. And to be ever vigilant because, like St. Peter says, your adversary, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion. Now that is an image that should frighten us. You want to be alone with a lion in a cage? I don't think so. We may be the lion of the tribe of Judah, who is Jesus Christ, foreshadowing Jesus Christ, but not the lion who is the enemy. And he is seeking someone to devour. St. Peter says, resist him firm in your faith, knowing that the same experience of suffering is required of your brotherhood throughout the world. Our fields of wheat become tainted and weeds sprout and sometimes by our own invitation weeds come and sprout. It's 
not always proper to blame the devil for everything. Oh, the devil did it. The devil made me do it. Well, we need to look into our own lives and how have we, by our own invitation, invited deception? Invited those weeds into our lives. And what are those weeds? In all sincerity, we should come before the Lord and ask him, Lord, what are those weeds in my life that need to be rooted out? And we can't simply root those weeds up ourselves. We can invite them, those weeds in, but we can't be the ones who pull them out. Our Lord is the one who pulls those weeds out. And most of all, by his sacraments. By the sacraments of baptism, confirmation, most of all by the sacrament of the Eucharist, by receiving the Eucharist worthily and with love and devotion and not just casually, to receive the sacrament of penance on a frequent basis. And I think everybody is surprised, and I know when I started going to confession more frequently when I was in my 20s, I was surprised what a difference the sacrament of penance made in my own life with God. And not just my own life with God, but my own sanity. <laughs> Even your own mental health. The sacrament of penance is really that sacrament where we go in and turn our backs on the devil and turn our faces toward the merciful Savior. And it's our Lord who's the one who goes in, who plucks out those weeds that can come up in our lives by, again, sometimes by our own invitation. We allow those weeds to sprout up. And before we know it, we can't even see. And we're blinded. But by making a good confession, the Lord comes in and gives us a share in his peace. So I invite to think about considering maybe you haven't been to confession in quite some time. Maybe some of our viewers haven't been in years or decades, perhaps 50 years even, to go to our Lord with confidence, to go to him and, and simply ask for help even. You know, Father, I haven't been to confession in 50 years. Can you help me? Yes, I can help you. And just simply to walk through the commandments, to walk through those weeds in our life. Because the Lord wants to bring us into his barn and into his kingdom. He doesn't want our lives to be stifled by those weeds that prevent us from really breathing, breathing with his own divine life much more than oxygen that we breathe right now, but he wants us to breathe with his own divine life. 